It's uh, great to be here. Uh, this is my third time in uh, Como, and uh, the first time was for Riccati equations, the second time was for periodic control, and now for uh, this uh, bit fest that we're uh, having. Uh, what I want to do is uh, talk about a slight uh, uh, paradigm in the way we look at estimation, and to look at a character, uh, character uh, uh, characteristic function approach to uh, estimation. So the motivation for this is basically, conventionally, uh, we have been looking at um, um, the way of looking at uh, um, estimation is through the um, um, construction of the uh, conditional probability density function. And it's basically the propagation of a conditional probability density function and, for example, the most famous one of which is the Kalman filter, which uh, basically is the, uh, the, char the, um, um, char the uh, conditional probability density function is Gaussian and remains Gaussian as you uh, update and propagate. So what I want to do is uh, look at uh, some of these things from the conditional mean uh, form, um, one of which was is that sometimes you can't uh, obtain the uh, structure of the uh, uh, conditional probability density function directly, but you can get it from the characteristic function of the conditional probability density function. And that was true for the work that I've been doing looking at heavy tail distributions, uh, which is, for example, the uh, Cauchy uh, distribution, which is additive noise to a uh, linear uh, system. So, uh, using the characteristic function of the conditional probability uh, density function uh, provides an alternative approach. And um, uh, what I'd like to say is, is that uh, this idea uh, became uh, more uh, emphatic uh, when I gave a uh, talk at uh, Lund um, and uh, Kyle Ashram uh, basically uh, talked, uh, when I was giving my talk on Cauchy distributions, said, look, I got two takeaways from your talk. One of the takeaways is that if you use Cauchy distributions, you get a conditional probability density function which is not, uni which is not unimodal, has multiple uh, peaks, um, which characterize it and characterizes a lot of, uh, of uh, structures for density functions. And the other one is, I just hadn't seen anybody use the characteristic function approach to uh, construct uh, uh, these uh, uh, these uh, estimators. So uh, that gave uh, my colleague and I, uh, uh, Moshe Dan, uh, the notion that maybe we'll sort of uh, generalize it a little bit, and that's what I want to talk about, that generalization uh, today. So what we're going to talk about is a general form of the update and propagation of the uh, characteristic function uh, which we've obtained. So. Um, the basic notion is, is that we're going to do it for a very general linear type system, which is this dynamical system here, is a discrete, everything here is in discrete time. Um, the uh, state x is, uh, can be n-dimensional. Uh, phi and gamma and h uh, for the measurements here uh, can be uh, time varying as well. But, um, in, uh, confuse the notation by putting more k sub subscripts on it. Um, the additive noise, wk and vk, can be uh, uh, anything, and the initial uh, uncertainties can be uh, anything, but usually they're in the same class. So one of the things I want to talk about is the class of, of uh, density functions that I'm talking about are in a particular class called uh, alpha-stable um, uh, density functions. Um, which is an interesting class, which includes the Gaussian, the Cauchy, the Bay, and things of that sort of type of uh, densities. So the point is, is that here, the density function for W is a density function which uh, has a notation here for uh, the characteristic function of uh, phi sub W, um, F of uh, sub V, uh, basically <coughs> the density function for the measurement noise, and that's associated with this characteristic function for phi of v, and the initial condition, which starts at uh, states uh, k equal to 1, um, is uh, a given uh, density function 
and that is uh, basically uh, as a characteristic function, which is phi. Uh, the measuring history, which uh, we characterize this thing uh, um, uh, in, in terms of uh, the measurement sequence from Z1 to Zk, is going to be called Y of k. So the upshot of what we'd like to get is the conditional mean, which is uh, based upon uh, the measurement Y of k. And, uh, so it's the expected value of x of k, but the basic problem that you really want to capture is the conditional probability density function of x at time k, given all the measurements up to y of k. Having this, you not only get the conditional mean, you might get the conditional moments, and uh, et cetera, depending upon um, uh, the structure of the uh, problem that you have. So. Um, in conjunction with that, we also have uh, the notation that phi, uh, which is now the characteristic function, which is the characteristic function of this density function. So uh, this basically, this characteristic function is like a Fourier transform of this density function. So um, that's what the characteristic functions are associated with um, x of k given y of k nu being the spectral uh, variable. In the cases here, uh, these may be scalars. Nu is usually a uh, end vector associated with the dynamical system. So what we want to do is propagate this uh, thing. So um, let's assume that we start off with the uh, density function for the state of k given all the measurements up to k minus 1. And associated with that, let's assume that the uh, corresponding characteristic function uh, is also uh, given as known. And what we want to do is uh, uh, do an update now uh, with a particular measurement. So we want to look at first measurement updates, and then we're going to look at um, um, propagation. <coughs> so the first thing we want to do is update with this measurement at time uh, k. So the conditional density function is given by the joint density function of x of k and y of k divided by the marginal density function f y of k. And um, I bring this up because what I want to do is uh, I'm going to do is generate really this uh, joint density function, which is I'm going to call the uh, unnormalized <coughs> density function without normalizing it with respect to f of y. And this joint density function can also be written as the uh, density function of x of k given y of k minus 1 times the density function of z of k uh, given x of k. So uh, it can be rewritten in this form or in this form. This is the form we're going to uh, uh, use. This is the form. just want to make the point that this is what we uh, will be generating. So, um, and f of y is nothing but the uh, marginal uh, uh, associated with this. And notice this integral over here is over x of k. And what it means basically is the dimension. The number of integrations here are the d dimension of x of k, but all these integrals go from minus infinity to infinity. So that's what that means. Okay, so, so the point is, is that rather than generate the conditional probability density function, uh, what we're going to do is generate the <coughs> unnormalized conditional uh, VDF, which is this joint distribution, as I said before. <coughs> and now what we want to do is a update, and let's start out with the joint density function for uh, F bar. Um, so this is the uh, unnormalized density function. And the characteristic function of this is taking the, in a sense, a Fourier transform of this density, the unconditional, unnormalized density function uh, given here with respect to uh, d of x. So what we want to do is generate this characteristic function by taking it explicitly. And notice that what you get is, even though this is the unnormalized density function, if I evaluate, if I evaluate 
uh, this density function at mu equal to zero, I do recover the uh, normalized uh, function. So once I have the characteristic function, <coughs> I'm in good shape. Okay, so, um, so let's start out with that uh, density function, and let's take this, uh, and then you can look at this as a convolution integral, and we can take this convolution integral, and using the dual convolution property, this corresponds to an integral uh, in the new domain in this form. So we have a convolution integral now uh, with respect to uh, this vector eta. So eta is a n-dimensional uh, uh, is an n-dimensional vector associated with this integration here. So this um, n um, integrations from minus infinity to infinity over eta. And then this is the guy that we're going to um, uh, uh, analyze. And in particular, let's analyze this part of it over here. This part, we assume we know. Um, this part over here, we want to actually extract a little bit more from it. Because what we want is a universal um, uh, formula for this update. No matter what H is, if H is um, we're going to start out where H is a square matrix, but H could be a scalar, um, uh, Z could be a scalar, or H could be have a dimension greater than the, uh, you have more measurements than you have states. So I want a particular update formula which characterizes this no matter what the uh, dimension of uh, H is. And uh, so in order to do that, let's analyze this function F of B. So um, it depends upon uh, the dimension and the rank of, uh, of H. So um, in doing that, let's um, consider first that H is an N by N uh, matrix, and that um, it has a rank of N. And therefore, if we make a change of uh, substitution um, for, uh, for this ZK minus uh, HX is, is new, uh, so we're making a change of variables here. Uh, so you'll see that the change of variables goes from x of k to d nu. And therefore, we get a form that looks uh, something of uh, this sort. And now we want to uh, uh, use this and put it back into the original uh, characteristic uh, function. One of the things that um, uh, would be interesting about this, uh, this form is that if this was a, if I had a scalar measurement, for example, then I would have here, when I do this transformation, not this one particularly, but another one, what I get is a product of delta functions. I want to make that point because when you put that back into the uh, convolution integral, all those delta functions go away and you get a scalar integral, for example. So, um, so here we have it in, in this form and we substitute it back into here and we have this structure that looks uh, basically like this with one more transformation though. I want to go from eta, which is operated by H, and put it basically over here. So I'm going to make one more transformation that zeta is equal to H uh, inverse transform, trans transpose times eta, substitute that in here, and I get this form which is the uh, universal form that I want to suggest is true no matter what. So uh, when n is equal to m, this guy over here is n. And this zeta is, a n is n dimensional. However, uh, as I said before, this function over here could have had a product of delta functions so that when m is equal to 1, I'm going to get a scalar here. So, and even if um, m is greater than m, I get exactly the same form. The only thing that changes is the m. So when I do this, I get this update formula for the characteristic function that is in this form. And the idea came to us for, for all of this. We had done this uh, for the cow sheets for a single variable, and we generalized this for all these, uh, all these cases. And the only thing that changes here is m. However, the dimension of zeta changes according to what m is. So the dimension of zeta over here is of the same order as, as m. So this is, the up, this is the update formula for a uh, measurement. 
The second one is, well, what does time propagation look like? So in doing time propagation, uh, basically we want to uh, uh, take the density function uh, for the state at time k and the process noise and make a uh, change of variables to the state at xk plus 1 and the process noise by using this equation over here. So we make a change of variables from xk and wk to xk plus 1 and wk. And then we take the marginal of that and integrate over dw to get the uh, density function for f bar at time k plus 1, given the measurements up to y of k. So this, is, this form is a little bit of a generalization of things that you've already seen. So um, move along a little bit here. But here, you're integrating over uh, dk plus 1. And now what we want to do is, is, whoops, now we have this integration over here. We substitute this into here. We have a double integration now with respect to xk plus 1 and wk. OK, so now we have a double integration of these two. And uh, what we want to do is interchange wk uh, with uh, x of k. So we're going to change the order of integration and use the substitution that xk plus 1 is using the dynamics. And now we're going to integrate with respect to dw and dk plus, and dk, dx of k, sorry. And uh, when we do that, we get this double integration over here. Uh, w basically is a constant with respect to this. And this is the traditional way of, of the fact that what I'm getting at here is that uh, when you take these double integrals, as you know, you get the product of characteristic functions, which is given over here. So the, the propagation is just simply the product of the, of the, um, product of the uh, characteristic function uh, propagated uh, with phi on the <coughs> spectral vector nu and the uh, process noise, which is gamma transpose operating on nu. So this is the sort of general update formula that you get. So on the whole, the measurement update uh, is of this form, as I showed before, and the propagation is of this form. So we have both the propagation and the um, uh, and measurement update uh, structure. OK, so what do we do with this? So if we have this form for phi, what we want to do is find out maybe what the conditional mean and the conditional variance is. So it turns out that, as we said before, we need the normalization factor to be able to get the conditional mean. Well, that's just, once we have this form over here, substituting in 0 uh, for nu, and we get the, uh, the normalization factor. The interesting thing is that x hat is given by the the, uh, this should be a partial derivative of phi with respect to nu, um, uh, given nu equal to uh, zero. But notice that we have a j here. So this part of the, this part of the characteristic function, when I put in zero, is going to be real. This part of the character, when I take the derivative, that's going to be complex to cancel the j. And then the second partial derivative to get the second moment has to be uh, real again because it's divided by j squared, which is just minus <coughs> 1. And, all the, and, and in both cases, these are divided by the normalization factor. And then to get the conditional, uh, uh, the conditional uh, uh, variance uh, is given by uh, using uh, the conditional uh, second moment and the first moment in this particular form. So you can get all the moments, at least these two. Uh, for what we were doing with um, Cauchy distributions, that's all we could get uh, for this. But uh, at least it was uh, true for that. So let me go through a few examples uh, for this. Um, and um, what I'm doing here is basically for the symmetric alpha stable uh, set of distributions. Um, and these are characterized by their um, and it's interesting, characterized by their characteristic functions. <laughs> uh, and, and, but there, which is expressed as e to the minus sigma 
is a uh, is just a uh, number um, a parameter. Alpha is a, another parameter, but that characterizes uh, a member of the class. And nu, this is the absolute value of nu, and nu is the spectral variable. So when alpha is equal to 2, this guy is the characteristic function for the Gaussian. When alpha is, notice alpha is, Gaussian is in the class. Uh, alpha is equal to 1, this is the characteristic uh, uh, function for the Cauchy. When alpha is equal to 1 half, uh, then it's a characteristic function for the little v. These are the only three uh, functions which have analytical forms um, for their uh, density functions. All the others get a little bit more confused. OK, so what I want to do is talk about this class and talk about three cases. Uh, the first case is just the scalar. And I'm going to talk about, for just a one update, I managed to be able to find it for the conditional mean for the one update scalar problem for all alpha between 0 and 2. OK. The second one is what I've been doing for the last eight years or more is I've been looking at Cauchy distributions. And I'll show you what that form looks like. But the third one is I want to talk about the Kalman filter. Is there a difference if you apply characteristic function approach to, to uh, deriving the Kalman filter than if you use the PDF form? And there is. There is a difference between them. OK, so let's take the first one, the scalar state, which is, um, uh, so z is just, a, this is just a scalar, one measurement. x is uh, in this class, and v is in the class. Notice that x and v are, are, are the same. You know, I'm not mixing up alphas here. Okay? If, if, if the state is, is in any particular value of alpha, so is it this. Now, what makes these things, by the way, what makes these class stable is the fact you know the central limit there. You know, sums of Gaussians are Gaussians, right? Now, in this class, sums, like, sums of Cauchy's are Cauchy's. I mean, the central limit there, that we, you know, it doesn't converge, you know, if you take a whole a bunch of these random variables and sum them all up, it doesn't converge to the Gaussian. They converge to, the set to a member of that particular class. So that's what makes this a kind of an interesting uh, uh, class of uh, uh, distributions. So uh, this is, so x is basically given by uh, this characteristic function, and uh, v is the same one with the same alpha in this distribution, but they're overall alphas from 0 to uh, 2. So if I looked at the function that I had just derived, then I get that phi of x given the measurement z is given by this integral, which uh, I can't solve in general. OK. But if you screw around a little bit, you find out that when nu is equal to 0, this gives the uh, density function for, uh, for f of z. Okay, and it turns out that when you play around with it, uh, you can get that uh, something times the density function for f of z is divided by f of z, and what you get left over is the conditional mean after you take the normalization. So what you get is, is that you get the first moment in closed form, <coughs> and which is nice because look at what it is, is that the estimate of, um, of x, given the measurement z, is linearly related to z, which is kind of you know nice. So um, if alpha is equal to 2, which is the Gaussian, which you'd expect, you get an operator on z. It's also true for the Cauchy, but it's true for all these cases for, uh, for all alpha. It's not true in general, just for this very first one. And if you ask me to give you the conditional mean, um, I would give you a series solution for this. But, uh, <coughs> Convergent huh? series? Um, not necessarily for all alpha, no. no. Uh, for alpha greater than uh, possibly equal to one, but greater than one to two. Okay. Anyhow, it's a, it's a hot class. Okay, but it's an interesting class. Okay, so if we look at the the um, form for the Cauchy noise, which I've spent some time for. 
here I've got a structure which is in closed form. So it turns out that in this particular case, it's recursive. This function phi over here is twice differentiable. Now it's, um, and, it, it, and it's in closed form. So this form repeats over and over again in the same structural form uh, for every measurement and, every, and for propagation. It does the same thing over and over again. These lines in here, notice, are, are basically sine functions. And this is an absolute value function. And this guy over here, this, these um, um, brackets in here are inner products. So this is a direction which is a priori known operating on nu. And it's the same one for every one of these terms. Now what makes this problem a little bit difficult that we're working on is that it keeps on growing. Okay, it's got a, but, other, but other than that, it's, it's great. Um, and it gives a very nice uh, structure. And a lot of these parameters are a priori known. Um, this g term over here uh, basically is a nonlinear function of the measurement. The b over here, over here, is a linear function, but this is a nonlinear function of the measurements. Okay, a very nicely structured one, and I'll bet there's a mathematical way of sort of even simplifying it better than I've been able to. But we are working on that, and but it also is that this thing grows and grows, but it turns out that lots of these terms combine. Uh, terms like these terms in here combine in here. Uh, so there's a lot of these directions look the same. A lot of the ones, and, and these whole terms over here, these, this, this argument over here, are the same for a lot of these terms, and they combine. And so you get a lot of structure that's in here, but not enough. Not enough. Anyhow, so that's, that's the Cauchy uh, structure. And let me just sort of end off with, what, what is the Kalman filter? Well, the Kalman filter covariance is some coefficient, uh, k of z, uh, which um, is going to be with, uh, related to the uh, innovation process. P of k here, notice what's nice about this, P of k enters the characteristic function as the variance. Not in the PDF form, it enters as the inverse of the variance. So the singularity of P of k is not a problem in this form, which it is basically in the, um, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, density function. Uh, of the so what it gives is this form for the common filter. And I have to end up with the Cartan equation, so that's one of the reasons I have a discrete form in here. And so, this, so you directly get for PK this update formula. Now, when you use the PDF form, you have to use the matrix inversion lemma to get it in this form. You, this comes out directly. So one of the things that Kalman liked about his approach is that he was able to get this directly by minimizing the error variance directly. But it wasn't a Bayesian approach, which this is. So this guarantees that this solution that we have here is really a, a conditional mean estimator. OK, so and um, this term over here is the residual, so I'm going to call that R and Z of K. It turns out that this coefficient is nothing but the density function for each of these uh, R of Ks in here. So it's just the product of those. So every time you do an update, that's what you get for this, uh, for this update term. And then you get the usual propagation equation from this and in uh, this form. And these two forms over here uh, will give us the discrete time of Riccardi equation. And if you take the limit, you get the differential equation. Or if you take the limit in time. OK, so basically what I uh, try to do is present an alternative using characteristic uh, functions based on estimation. Uh, the measurement update uh, is a nice convolution integral, and time propagation is a simple product. We get the moments uh, easily, as long as the function is differentiable. You've got to prove that. Uh, and examined it for a few uh, cases. Uh, basically, the two cases are the Cauchy and the Kalman filter, and they're all in the class of, uh, of uh, symmetric alpha stable uh, distributions for the incoming noise. So, um, in ending this, I just want to show a uh, picture that was on the website, because I was in it, but in the Sergio, 
Um, he looks the same, uh, except he's without the tie. And there I am uh, here, and I've got my, I want you to show, I still have my glasses in my, uh, in my pocket. The same one. Huh? The same one? No, it's a different case, but the same glasses. <laughs> so that was the good old days. Okay, thank you. Thank you.